Hi everyone, I'm Shubham Jhavar. I'm a master teacher at Vedantu. We are discussing JE Advanced 2021, Paper 1, Mathematics. And the question for this video is this. <coughs> for any 3 cross 3 matrix M, let M between two vertical lines denote the determinant of M. Let E be this matrix, P be this matrix, F be this matrix. If Q is a non-singular matrix of order 3 cross 3, that means determinant of Q is not 0, then which of the following statements is or are true? There are four options. It is a multiple choice, multiple correct type question. Let's first consider option A. So here uh, P is this. So what about P square? It becomes 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 times 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And if you see carefully, it's very simply 1, 0, 0. So uh, what you do is 1. 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 so that essentially means p square turns out to be identity matrix that also means uh, p is inverse of itself now what about uh, f being equal to p e p let's explore what is p e p so p e p essentially is so uh, here you put uh, P and here you put E, P. If you see carefully, it's essentially swapping of second and third row. Check it out. As you multiply, it's like swapping of second and third rows. So this essentially becomes 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 8, 13, 18 multiplied by P again. Now again if you see carefully it is swapping off you may say second and third column. Check it out. You get uh, you know 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2. And then when you take this row and multiply uh, you know accordingly you get 8, 18, 13 and uh, then uh, 2, 4, 3. So uh, this essentially if you see carefully uh, you know 1, 3, 2, 8, 18, 13, 2, 4, 3. So it essentially is F only. So that essentially means F is indeed P, E, P. So that essentially means A is correct. Now in B and C options, we are seeing, uh, you know, talk about uh, determinant. We, are talk we, we want to talk about determinant. So what about determinant of E? And also then we'll talk about determinant of F uh, because those terms are involved here. Uh, and determinant of P, clearly you can see, uh, determinant of P turns out to be, check it out, minus 1. So what about determinant of E? It becomes 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 8, 13, 18. Now to simplify my calculation, let me uh, do, uh, you know, uh, R2 goes to R2 minus 2 R1. And R3 goes to R3 minus 8 R1. So as to create zeros. So 1, 2, 3. 2 times you subtract and 8 times you subtract. So you essentially get 8, 20, minus 6. So if you see carefully, these two rows are proportional. Yeah, so that essentially means determinant of E is 0. Now what about determinant of F? Determinant of F is determinant of PEP. -E Why? Because F is equal to PEP. -E so this essentially is determinant of P multiplied by determinant of E multiplied by determinant of P. Essentially, since determinant of E is 0, it becomes 0. So that means determinant of E and determinant of F both are 0. So now let's explore option B and option C. If you see option C first, clearly uh, left hand side is 0. Why? Because determinant of E and determinant of F and anyway, both are 0. So left hand side is 0, right hand side is 0 and 0 greater than 0 is false. So C is not correct. Now uh, coming to uh, B option, EQ plus PF uh, Q inverse. So uh, EQ plus PF, F you can write as what? PEP. -E so F you write as PEP -E Q inverse. So uh, this determinant is what we are looking for. So this essentially becomes if you see carefully, uh, EQ plus P, P, P square. P square is identity matrix. And any matrix multiplied by identity matrix is the matrix itself. So P square is identity matrix. So it essentially becomes E, P, Q inverse. 
Now this essentially will be uh, zero. Why? Because you can write this as E times Q plus PQ inverse. Yeah, distributive property of uh, you may say matrices. So here uh, this essentially becomes determinant of E multiplied by determinant of Q plus PQ inverse. Now no matter what this determinant is, since determinant of E is zero, it will be zero. And what about right hand side? It is determinant of E multiplied by determinant of Q, which is zero. It is determinant of P multiplied by determinant of F multiplied by determinant of Q inverse. Now determinant of F is zero, so that means this also becomes zero. So zero plus zero is zero. Left hand side is zero, right hand side is zero. So they are equal indeed. Now coming to the D option, sum of diagonal elements of P inverse EP plus F is equal to the sum of diagonal entries of E plus P inverse FP. Here, if you see carefully, uh, P inverse is same as P. We have already established this. So uh, it essentially becomes PEP plus F and PEP from option one and that what we have, uh, you know, got uh, while uh, exploring ex uh, option one, option A. So PEP is F only. So this essentially becomes 2F. Now what about E plus P inverse FP? P is in, indeed invertible and, uh, you know, uh, in fact, since P inverse is P, you can write P as P inverse also. So what you have is E plus P inverse F P inverse. Now since uh, P E P is F, if you, uh, you know, take, uh, uh, if you m multiply by P inverse post and pre multiply, if you do that, uh, P inverse P will become identity matrix, P inverse P will become identity matrix. And here, uh, what you will get is E equal to P inverse F P inverse. So here, uh, since P is P inverse only, P inverse F P inverse essentially is E. So what you get is E plus E 2E. Now clearly, uh, some of diagonal elements, what you may say as trace of E and F is same. 1 plus 3 plus 18, 1 plus 18 plus 3. And uh, some of diagonal elements of 2F will essentially be 2 times, uh, you know, 1 plus 18 plus 3. And some of diagonal elements of 2E essentially again will be 2 times 1 plus 3 plus 18, which is essentially the same. So that means D is also correct. A, B, D are the answers. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for the next question.